Recently, I found myself with needing to create a high voltage square wave using a low voltage square wave as a control signal, and this sent me down a brief rabbit hole. Sometimes you'll find yourself having to switch a high voltage load with a transistor switch using a low voltage control signal, like a 12 volt fan, to a transistor controlled by a 5 volt Arduino pin. And this is called high side or low side switching, depending on if the transistor in question is on the high side or low side of the load. If you have an NPN transistor with the load on the collector, this is a low side switch because the transistor's down on the low side. Zero volt on the emitter, five volt on the base, 12 volts on the load and the collector. Now usually you need to have the collector and the base be the same voltage in order to drive the transistor completely into saturation. But that doesn't really matter for a BJT in this situation because conceptually the BJT amplifies current. So it doesn't have to be driven into full saturation, it just has to have enough base current to open up to enough collector current to drive the load as much as you need it driven. And if necessary, you can always use Darlington or something. So this works fine. It never turns fully on, but it doesn't need to. But if you have a PNP transistor with the load on the low side, so it's a high side switch, you put your 12 volts on the emitter, got your zero volts down here, and your five volt control signal, so you're trying to turn the PNP off, you can see that's not going to work. You can easily drive the PNP into saturation because you can put out zero volts, but you cannot turn it completely off because you can't put out 12 volts on the base. And it'd have to be something like 11.4 to overcome the base emitter, or the emitter base drop. 11.4, 11.5 you'd have to reach to turn this thing off. So the NPN, the lower voltage could not turn it all the way on. For the PNP, the lower voltage cannot turn it all the way off. This one's actually a problem, and there's no solution. This, you just can't do this at all. Not without magically increasing voltage here, decreasing voltage there, it just doesn't work. So what you have to do is add parts. When you are actually doing a switch like this, when you're switching a higher load with a lower signal, the most common thing is just to use a second transistor. The first transistor is driven by the lower signal and releases the higher voltage to control the next one. Now the other solution is use a low side switch, use a relay, opto isolator, all kinds of other stuff. But in my case, I'm trying to create a square wave. So I have a five volt square wave and I need a higher voltage square wave, nine volts, 12 volts, whatever. I could create another oscillator and generate it that way, but that seems wasteful. I already have the square wave at a lower voltage for other parts in the circuit, so I want to use it to not be wasteful. Also, if I produce a higher voltage square wave, let's say I get a, an oscillator that can be driven at that higher voltage, I'd then have to reduce the voltage to use somewhere else, which you can do with a voltage divider, but like I said, there's got to be a better solution. So I tried to just use a push-pull. Let's just use 12 volts for the example. So we'll say 12 volts here. We'll say the square wave is 5 volts and 0 volts. So this is the perfect solution except for the fact that the 5 volt square wave cannot turn the PNP off. So I actually thought up about three or four different ways to do this, but every single one of them used four transistors. I could not figure out a way to do it with fewer than four transistors. If you can, that's great, let me know. But if I'm using four transistors anyway, I may as well do the lovely, symmetrical, easy thing, which is this. So this is just the push-pull. There's nothing fancy here, nothing changed there. This is the push-pull driver. So the square wave is five volts, the PNP here is fed by five volts, and the PNP there is fed by 12. That's the whole point. And then normally a push-pull like this is inverting. This makes it not inverting, so I have to invert the signal here because otherwise they'd both be on or off at the same time. Let's go over that now. If the square wave is high, then this NPN is getting five to zero volts, which opens it up. The collector connects ground, 12 volts through ground, turns on the PNP, and the load gets 12 volts. Just like before, five volts on the base and 12 volts minus the emitter base drop on the collector does not saturate the transistor. But all we're doing is driving the base of the PNP. It does not need any current at all, hardly. So that's perfectly fine, we're good. Then over here, we have the five volts on the square wave and a five volt PNP, which turns the PNP off, which does not let current through at all to the base of the NPN, and that stays off. 
which technically means it has a fluting input since this is an open collector configuration. Almost always, from what I've found, it's not a problem to leave the base of a BJT fluting. If you have any static discharge or induction or whatever, it might briefly turn it on, but the current is not sustained and the BJT needs current to keep going, so it might blip briefly, but it's not going to switch or anything. In very sensitive electronics, you might have to worry about that. Here we really don't. So this is why I needed the inverter, because a high square wave is going to turn on this, which is going to turn on this, so high square wave is going to put out high square wave here, non-inverting. And then if I just had this NPN, which could be driven by the 5 volt load, high here would turn on this NPN so they'd both be on, so I had to invert it somehow. So there's the fourth transistor. When the square wave is low, the NPN has got 0 to 0, so the NPN is closed, the PNP is getting no base current, and is closed. Square wave low here, 5 volts to 0 volts turns on the PNP, which lets high through to the base of the NPN, which turns that on, and lets the load in. And the load might be higher voltage. You know, it could be a discharging 10 volt capacitor or whatever. But again, it just has to let enough current through. So, 5 volts versus whatever volts. As long as it's open enough, it doesn't have to be in saturation. So this NPN will again drive that fine. So there is my simple symmetrical four transistor solution for using a lower voltage square wave to drive a higher voltage square wave with the benefit that it is push-pull, so it's power amplified. So this incoming signal, which already might or might not be power amplified, if it's not, then there you go. And if it is power amplified, it's, you know, you, you, you have a, you could have a different power source even. So anyway, you get the point. So let's do a quick demonstration. So here I have a five volt square wave, the same one I've been using for my voltage doubler videos. And I wish there was a way to get this oscilloscope to stabilize the signal without having to auto scale, but there you go. So there's the input square wave. The output square wave is over here, and for some reason it's stabilized. So if I, you know, move one down, you can see they're the same because it's still the same 5 volts. But if I change this voltage, I can change it to 10, change it to 15, 15, there. And it's right on there with no loss. It's right on the, the 15 line because each division is 5 volts right now. So you can just have whatever voltage square wave you want being driven it's just funny to me how I'll try to do a video and I'll have a problem. I'll solve the problem and do a video on the solution before doing the other video. But hey, more videos is good. So while I do the thing I was trying to do in the first place, I'll be seeing you.